Hey everyone, it's Farrah Prudence here. I am doing this for the first time on recommendation from my dear friend and sister, Inez Annie Cyrus. Um, it's with a very sad heart that I do this because there is yet another attack done by Islam where innocent Muslims or where innocent people are killed. Um, we all saw this coming. This isn't some people left some comments to me and to Inez that we're just trying to get our 15 minutes of fame. And let me tell you, it's a lot easier and it gets a lot more benefits to actually act like a ditz or do something else that gets us 15 minutes of fame. We are trying to spread the word. We have been trying to spread the word. We're trying to educate people and we are trying to bring the truth to America because the President of the United States as well as the media of the United States um, does not want to tell you the truth. They want to keep this quiet. So what's so different about the Orlando shooting? Uh, why is it so important that it was a Muslim who carried out that shooting? Yes, there are Christians and Jews and non-Muslims and psychos that go out there and kill people. But those are people that went off the rail. We call them crazy, we call them psychopaths, we put them in jail. As a community, we do not celebrate them. The problem is that with Islam, this attack is 100% sanctioned. This attack is in obedience to what Muhammad, their prophet, had said. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, a lot of people have said to me, I have a Muslim friend um, who is nothing like this. I have... Uh, I know that in, in the Qur'an it does not say to kill the homosexuals. You're correct, it does not. It calls them an abomination. It says that they transgress, transgress against Allah. Um, and by those definitions, they are considered kafirs. A kafir is a non-believer. Now, if you go to the Qur'an, you see how should we treat the non-believer. Muslims believe because Allah said in the Qur'an, we should kill the non-believer. Uh, that's all verses that say kill them where you find them slice off their necks then we go to the hadith the hadith is everything that Muhammad said and did now Allah says that homosexuals are transgressors against him against Allah that makes them kafirs and Allah says obey Muhammad in everything if you have a dispute about anything, if you don't understand anything about Islam, it doesn't say go ask your friendly Muslim neighbor. It says go back to the Quran and go back to your Prophet Muhammad. What did he do and what did he say? That's what you should obey. Muhammad specifically in several different hadiths, in several different Islamic documents that are agreed on by all Muslim scholars has said that if a man lays with another man, kill the doer and the receiver. There is no doubt about it. That is what he said. How can you misinterpret that? And for people that say that this is taken out of context, is there a situation where this is okay? Is there a context in which we are okay with somebody saying, kill the doer and the receiver? Why is it not okay to speak out against this? Why is it so normal for us to want to tolerate everything? Do we tolerate intolerance now? Is it not okay to say the world hate? People have left comments and have actually called me and said, you're hateful and you're a bigot. Um, and in a sense, I am. I am hateful. I hate killing innocent people. I hate the murder of innocent people. I hate throwing gays off of cliffs and throwing them off of buildings. I hate that. I hate female genital mutilation. I hate child brides. I hate honor killings. I hate that there's a fatwa, a judgment on my head. I hate the fact that my fellow Americans are eating the bait. Not only that, they're actually inviting it in our homes. We know for a fact that one of the Orlando mosques was talking about homosexuals must die. I know for a fact that this is preached in almost every single mosque in America. Why? Because Imams can't come up with stuff to preach from out of their head. They preach out of the Quran and out of the Sunnah. The Sunnah is everything Muhammad said and did. 
So if they're preaching out of that, and this is mentioned in there several different times, then there's a problem. Now, many of you are going to say, well, you know, the Old Testament talks about that, and Christians believe in that. Yes, Christians believe that it's a sin. But Christians, never will you ever find Jesus anywhere in the Bible saying, go kill a homosexual person. You will never find him killing anybody. This is a complete difference from what Muhammad did. Muhammad has murdered, Muhammad has raped, Muhammad has had sex slaves, uh, Muhammad had a child bride. Aisha was nine years old when he consummated the marriage. Her mom literally took her off the playground to give her to Muhammad. This is what the problem is. It's not guns. Even if you take away the guns, is that going to take away the will of Islam to continue to spread terror? No, it's not. Yes, I understand there are over 300,000 300, Muslims in the United States. About 1% of the population is Muslims. About, what, 1.6 billion Muslims in the world. No, I'm not saying 1.6 billion Muslims in the world are terrorists, but I am saying that Islam does equal terror. I am saying that the only reason that nobody wants to talk about it is because it's classified under the guise of a religion. Islam is not a religion. Islam is as much of a religion as the Nazi regime was. They just so happen to have a God and a prophet. The ultimate goal of Islam is to take over the world. They have not lied about it. They have been pursuing it for the last 1400 years. We're the only people who want to put their heads in the sand and say, no, 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 you don't mean that. You're my friend. They're not your friends. Are there Muslims who don't practice Islam to a T? Yes. But the problem lies in this. If a Muslim wakes up one day and says, I don't want to go to hell. I want to make sure that my God, Allah, is happy with me. What can I do? Well, then they're going to go refer to the Hadith in the Quran. And in the Hadith, Muhammad says, and I quote, Paradise is found under the shade of the sword. That the only way for a Muslim to be guaranteed paradise after not having a good life, to make sure that his good outweighs his bad, is to die in the jihad for Allah. Do you think that Umar thought he was going to die in the jihad for Allah and he was going to get his 72 virgins? Absolutely. Do you think that he was just going to get that? No. You see, the timing of his attack is probably more important because his attack was carried out in Ramadan, their holy month of fasting. Anything you do in Ramadan, you get twice the reward for. 72 times 2. It's 144 virgins that he's going to get, apparently, or so he thought. This is why there's a lot of bloodshed in Ramadan. This is why we see an increase in attacks every single time that we, um, or that I see Ramadan coming up on the calendar, my stomach just clenches. You don't understand. I grew up as a Muslim. I grew up with a father that said, hey, hey, follow and you know, death to all the Jews and death to the Americans. My dad was the one that danced when 9-11 happened. I know what they think and I know how they talk and my dad like I said in my previous videos you would never guess he did not have a beard he wore shorts he was completely westernized except for the fact that in his heart he hated everything that had to do with the West he hated us and yes I say us because he was so generous as to go get a fatwa put on me for not wanting to be a Muslim go imagine go figure that I'm gonna look at some of the questions right now I'm going to hopefully answer them for everybody. Thank you, Anne. Uh, yes, I have been accused of hate, and that's okay. Let me see. Three million Muslims and growing. You have to be careful of uh, the figures that come out from CARE. Uh, if you haven't read it, um, you can actually listen to it on uh, audible.com. The Muslim Mafia is an excellent book. I'm in the process of listening to it right now uh, while I do other things around the house and while I work. 
Thank you for all of the prayers. Um, yes. What is so radical, David? What is so radical about a Muslim following Islam? Why is that radical? Would it be radical if a Christian went and fed the poor? Or left all their possessions behind and went to evangelize? Missionaries are radical Christians? No, they're not. They're just Christians. They're just following what they believe in. Uh, why is it that Islam is going to be called a radical? And I, I want to answer something that a lot of people ask, and it's a really good um, question. Um, every time I look around, people are using new terms, like Islamist. I don't even know what that means. Um, a Muslim is a Muslim. There's no radical Muslim. There's no Islamist. There's no... Um, a jihadist can be anybody from the guy that blows up the bomb or the guy that actually recruits him, the guy who pays the zakah at the mosque. And that's very important to learn. We have jihadists of all kinds, and perhaps the most dangerous are the ones that give the money at the mosque and pretend to be your friend. Maybe we can learn from the non-Muslims of Iraq. <clears throat> Excuse me. They have been neighbors with their Muslim neighbors for over a thousand years. These are families that have lived door next door to each other for over a thousand years. They've broken bread, they went to school together, they were friends. They were more friends than your next door friendly Muslim neighbor. And what happened to them? I've only heard of a few stories where Muslims helped their neighbors when ISIS arrived. You know why? Because it comes down to you or them. And when it comes down to you or them, when their powerful Muslims friends, Muslim friends come into town, you're going to be the one that goes. Just like the people in Iraq. Excuse me. I don't tell people where I live because there is a fatwa on my head. So uh, I try to keep it as secret as I possibly can. Um, and you should know, if you have any questions, you can send them to me. I'm looking over them right now. Ramadan is a huge curse for everybody around the world. And it's funny that Muslims come here and they start to complain that Abercrombie and Fitch doesn't want to... Um, hire them with their head garb all around them and that you know that's injustice and that's inequality yet when you go to Muslim countries when Ramadan comes around even if you're at a Christian school you're not allowed to eat in front of the other kids if you're not fasting you go into a classroom by yourself or in the bathroom and that's where you eat your lunch they consider that tolerant if you don't fast during Ramadan in Saudi Arabia, forget about it. You can get prison time. You could get lashes. Um, you could possibly get killed for it. You could get hung for not fasting during Ramadan. This holy, peaceful month of theirs. This is a month when they get twice the reward for the same act of evil. The problem is that our tolerance has gotten to the point where we see something, we're told to say something, but then if we say something, then we get called hateful, racist bigots. How are we going to fix this problem? I'm going to do a live feed with Inez and Cyrus, hopefully on Saturday, and I will keep everybody, um, everybody in the loop. Go to her page and make sure you watch her videos. She's doing some amazing things out there. And for people that think that we're just trying to get a little bit of fame, there are much less dangerous ways to do that. Um, one of the things that I am suggesting is to not give back the bodies. One of the things that many Muslims believe is that if a Muslim is not buried a proper way, in the proper Islamic way, they will not be able to go to paradise. Now, seeing as to how this piece of crap who is getting called a man all over the media, thought that he was gonna go to paradise for killing our sons and daughters, I say we take his body and we bury it our way. We do whatever we want with it. We do not give back the body. That would be one way to make sure that when these bastards decide to carry out an attack, they think twice. 
no versions to be attained here in the United States. Hillary Clinton would like you to believe that it's about the guns. If we take away the guns, is it going to stop Muslims from hating us? No. I don't know. I'm sure many of you know this already. Muslims have, Islam has been a thorn in our side since before our country even was born. The Marines went to Tripoli to deal with them because even back then they wanted to cut off our heads. John Adams um, met with them, with the pirates that were killing us and taking our ships, and he asked why. Thomas Jefferson, I believe, was with him. They asked why we haven't done anything to you. They said because Allah has commanded us. That was over 200 years ago. 200 years later, they're on our shores. They're on our land. They're taking our welfare, and they are killing us. They're preaching hate from their pulpits, and yet people want to be more concerned about a bakery that refuses to bake a cake. It seems like everything is tolerated in this, in this country anymore, except for Christianity, Judaism, and anybody who has a decent sense of morality. If you speak up against something, unless it has a cross on it, it's hateful. It's bigoted. I'm not sure how else we're going to deal with this. Be vigilant. Open up your eyes. Say something. It is better to be hated and to be righteous than it is to be popular and to lose your friends and your daughters and your sons. Maybe now we know a little bit about how Israel feels every single day. Of course, they get attacked more during Ramadan as well, just like everybody else in this world. But it seems like we're no longer off of the list. This is at home. Now the president is blaming it on gun violence. Before it was workplace violence. Um, before that in San Bernardino, it was, uh, it was also the guns and it was, you know, they missed one too many hugs and ISIS recruited them. The question isn't whether or not, not ISIS is related to that attack. It doesn't matter. ISIS is using this um, just to further their propaganda. I'm not gonna play their games. I don't care whether or not they're responsible for this attack. The most important question is, is Islam responsible for this attack? If a Muslim asks himself, what would Muhammad do? Would it result in a Muslim carrying out this attack? Yes, absolutely, 100% it would. And that is my concern. If you have any questions, send them to me right now, or you can send them to Facebook, or you can send them through the YouTube channel. Thank you all very much for being here today. Um, I will try and get another one of these here later on this week and where I can answer your questions live. Um, be careful. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. Be vigilant. Be safe. Uh, Ramadan is just starting, people. We should all be very aware of what's going on. Inez, I was on the phone with her this morning, and um, she said... You know, July 4th is coming up. I said, yeah, I'm worried about it too because it happens to be in Ramadan. I said, is it Ramadan or is it Eid? Uh, and she said, no, Ramadan ends July 5th. And my heart just sank. I pray to God that it's not true. That what... I pray to God that we are going to be safe. But please be vigilant. Uh, somebody is asking a question. I'm doing well, thank you. Um, yes, there is a rumor going around that Muslims do not get to go to heaven. So that is one of the things that really does scare them. I'm going to have to jump off of here. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, I will try and be on here tomorrow. Be sure to subscribe to my Facebook account and to YouTube so you'll know when um, I'm going to be on here live. Thank you. Be careful and have a good day.